Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review. This time we're reviewing episode 31. It's still 4 days until the tournament and Jarko finally arrives on Earth. Bulma asks him to take her to the center of the universe to use the Super Dragon Radar, to which Jarko replies that that is basically impossible. The universe is enormous, they can't just go to the center. But he has another idea to find the last Super Dragon Ball. Ask Lord Zuno, an alien not too far from here who supposedly knows everything. So Jaco and Bulma travel to meet Lord Zuno. After a few mishaps, they arrive before him and are able to ask whatever they want. But they end up wasting most of their requests on stupid reasons, and all they really find out is that there's only one set of Super Dragon Balls scattered amongst both Universe 6 and 7. So there's only one more ball left to find, but they can't get a complete set without winning this tournament. So, what did I like about this episode? Well, basically the entire concept of this just that you have Bulma and Jarko going off on a random adventure to some random planet to meet some random alien who's going to give them some information that's going to help them find Dragon Ball. Like, this really, it is really kind of reminds me of something that would be in basically like the very beginning of Dragon Ball. That, you know, just like random people, they go meet up, they get, get some advice from them, it has to, has to do with finding Dragon Balls, and then they leave, and it's probably, they're probably not going to come back. Or they might come back later on. I don't know, just the way that this was all just new information, new people, ex world building, expanding the universe, and it was just really, really great. It's the kind of thing that, yeah, it just feels like it's like from early Dragon Ball, back when they used to go around and expand the lore and expand the world, and it wasn't just sort of, well, no, the world isn't really that important because we're talking about the battles. Here it's like, it's not about the battles, it's about just random adventures. Of course, it's not completely like Dragon Ball because, well, the scale is much higher because they're not just on Earth, they're on another planet. And I think this is just a perfect way to just kind of mix the, you know, the adventures and the sort of more story-driven focus of Dragon Ball with the sort of more high stakes, high everything, ridiculous over-the-topness of the sort of Dragon Ball Z era. And then there's the just kind of the sort of amazing fact that this entire episode was about Jaco and Bulma. I mean, like, Bulma! Bulma is being like this really important character suddenly for this episode, which is great because, you know, Bulma's been there since the very beginning, so it's really cool to see her do something like really sort of unique to her. And Jaco, well, we have talked about Jaco. Jaco is still like my favorite. Okay, he's not my favorite character, but he's he's definitely rising up the ranks out of like all the new characters in Dragon Ball. Like, Jaco is like, I like Jaco. Jaco is cool. And so I really like to see him getting more screen time. And the humor in this episode was really great. Like, kind of very sort of Toriyama-esque, and so, so you have things like, yeah, Lord Zuno first saw his entire appearance, which is probably some kind of Japanese thing that I'm not entirely sure about, and then there's things that, you know, like, he requires a kiss, and then it's like, then Jaco uses his wish to, well, his request to ask what Bulma's, what Bulma's bust size was, which is like, very, very typical early Dragon Ball Toriyama humor, so that was great. And then there's, this, then there's all these other like minor stuff, like how the alien that Jaco was trying to find, his sort of crime was basically just dining and then like leaving without paying the bill. And it's like, this is such a, this is a galactic offense, the fact that he's just trying, he's just leaving these restaurants without paying. So like, that's just hilarious. As for what I didn't like about this episode, just like episode 28, this episode, a lot of like almost the entire scenario from like start to end was almost in completely the same as one of the chapters in the Dragon Ball Super tie-in promotional manga. And if you compare the manga to the anime, you can really see a lot of Toei's sort of form of storytelling and form of just sort of padding out episodes a bit. I'm not saying the problem is that the episode was padded out. My problem with the episode was just the characterization. Ever since the, pretty much ever since the 1980s, Toei Animation has had a habit of just exaggerating characters' personalities from the manga for reasons that I'm honestly not exactly sure why. And that kind of also happened in this episode. In that this episode was a lot of just sort of Jaco being Bulma's like punching bag, Jaco saying something, offending Bulma, and then Bulma like hitting him and you know trying to harm him in some kind of retaliation. It's a joke that was played quite a few times this episode itself and I don't want them to just keep doing this because they did this in Res the Resurrection F arc as well and it's just getting old. I, I, I think this joke is just getting old. It really does remind me of what Toei did with like Bulma in pretty much like the 80s and 90s. Like 
Jaco right now is reminding me of Oolong. It, just that they, they're having this character whose entire purpose now seems to just be to be someone for Bulma to hit whenever they say something stupid or even when they say something doesn't even deserve it. So I, that's just it. I just don't really like how they characterize Bulma and even Jarko sometimes. I mean all the concepts are there in like the tie-in manga but that doesn't have a lot of just jokes dedicated to just Bulma hitting Jarko. So yeah. As for next episode... It looks like we're finally actually getting to the tournament. After only really like three or four episodes of preparation, which by Dragon Ball standards is surprisingly quick, we're already getting to the tournament. So um, next episode, we're going to meet the Universe 6 participants. I mean, if you guys have seen the poster, you know who they are, but you know, we're going to get like a proper introduction to them. I'm really interested to know like what these characters are like, what their personalities are like, what they sound like. And you know, I wonder if there's going to be any voice actors that I recognize because that would be like really, really cool. So that was Dragon Ball Super episode 31. It was really fun. And it was this kind of scenario for this kind of episode that I would honestly really like to see more of with a little bit better characterization, but I would just really like to see more of these sort of almost side story episodes of just other characters who aren't Goku and Vegeta doing things that aren't necessarily related to getting stronger and meeting characters who aren't necessarily really strong fighters. It's just, it really adds more to the universe knowing that, you know, sometimes there are things, this entire place, this entire thing doesn't just run on who can punch people the hardest. Sometimes there are just, there's just more. I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure that Lord Zuno, at least the actual design, was drawn by Akira Toriyama. And if sort of the premise for this episode was also some somewhat Toriyama's idea, I would not be surprised because it kind of did feel like something he would do. I mean, I don't know this for sure. That is just a guess, but you know, I'm just wondering. So either way, this episode was just a nice, fun little distraction before the tournament starts. Really, these last few episodes have all been just really nice, fun little distractions before the tournament starts. It's almost kind of making me not want to start the tournament because all these episodes beforehand have, been, have actually just been all really good. I hope the tournament doesn't just, you know, ruin this record and has to screw up in some sort of way. But now I'm just being overly pessimistic. You know, for all I know, the tournament will be even better and that will be absolutely amazing. So this is Gabby, signing out, and I'll see you all next week. Bye, guys.